am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So let me tell you what's going on. Today it's going to be Roy Cooper. He seems to be the you know favored uh, character in this uh, Harris VP lineup, according to uh, what I uh, see on the news anyway. So anyway, he is, and I'll just tell you what I see about him in Wiki, and uh, then we'll pull the cards and see what you think. But he seems to be a sensation right now. But who is he? Roy Asbury Cooper III. He's born in June. Uh, 13th in 1957, so same year as me. As an attorney and politician, uh, oh, he has been an attorney and politician uh, since uh, 2017, and he's the 75th governor of North Carolina, and he served as the 49th attorney general of North Carolina from 2001 to 2017. And in the North, and he was in the North Carolina General Assembly in both the House from 87 to 91, and in the Senate from 91 to 2001. Then he was born in Nashville, North Carolina, to Beverly Thorne, um, and she was a teacher, uh, of, and uh, Roy Asbury Cooper II, his dad, who was a lawyer, uh, come uh, Democratic Party operative, and um, uh, our Roy Cooper himself attended public schools. He worked on his parents' tobacco farm during the summers, and Cooper graduated from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill in 79 and he earned his Juris Doctor from the University of North Carolina School of Law 82. So a local guy got, you know, done really well just like his dad. Uh, he began his career as a lawyer and in 1986 represented the North Carolina House of Representatives and in 91 he was the North Carolina Senator until 2001 and he was North Carolina Attorney General in 2000 and re-elected in 2004, 2008, 2012 and he served just under 16 years. Hmm, I'm not sure what that says. Uh, the second longest tenor for a, an attorney general in the uh, state's history, and then Cooper defeated a Republican governor incumbent, and then he was himself reelected in 2020. I mean, it just says he's all about, he's strong there in, uh, in the Carolinas, North Carolina. So let's see. He's married to Kristen Cooper, uh, they have three daughters, all uh, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill graduates, specifically all of them. Uh, they reside in the executive mansion. Cooper was taught Sunday, has taught Sunday school classes, served as a deacon and elder at White Memorial Presbyterian, Ch Presbyterian Church, and is an avid fan of the National Hockey League uh, Carolina's uh, Hurricane. Now let's see. The pronunciation of his name. In 2003, so recently, he said that his last name should actually be pronounced as, so sounding like foot, cupper, foot, cupper, hmm. as opposed to Cooper, uh, which he explained, uh, spam, all right, which he, uh, he explains um, is a local pronunciation of the name. Cooper, he says, Cooper is a local pronunciation, Eastern in North Carolina, and he grew up in Nash County, and as such, his name originally was always said as Cooper um, off until college, and it's fine with either pronunciation, but I'm saying, like, why mention it? Anyway, so let's see what the cards have to say. All the rage, Roy Cooper. Okay, so like always, it's... um. Who is it going to be? Who is it going to be? Who's Because she's got to pick somebody. So who's going to be Camilla's pick for this uh, VP spot? And um, it seems a popular choice right now. Uh, it was just a surge in the news talking about this Roy Cooper of North Carolina, the governor. So let's see what the cards say. Um, I didn't necessarily have him next on the list, but, uh, you know, there we go. We're going to eight. And, uh, and these, uh, the ones so far seem to be in those other two, three spots is one, two, and three. I don't, I know Kelly first, and I don't recall the particular, uh, Josh Shapiro second, and um, I don't recall the order of the others. But anyway, so this will be Roy Cooper in the eyes of Kamala Harris. But before we do that, we have to get just a moment, you know, of meditation. Thank you. 
Okay. So, Roy Cooper, in the eyes of Kamala Harris, is he... Is he, is, is, is he in her vision, first of all? As, as seriously as seems to be, as, as what the news seems to, to place it, records. Is he in her vision that seriously? Kamala Harris on Roy Cooper. Okay. Kamala Harris on Roy Cooper. So the Nine of Gardens. So this is uh, just having more uh, gardens are uh, value. So it's like coin. So it's just having more of, of than what you need of this value. You've, you're just really uh, abundant uh, value. Um, the second one is King of Winds. So that's the King of Swords. So wow, truth, justice rules them all. And then the Seven of Fire. So that's a Seven of Wands. And this can be uh, a difficult place to be. This can be fighting off a bunch of issues, wands being actually plants forward movement. So what is her view? Apparently she does have a view of him because these are very strong cards. So the Nine Guard, a lot of value. Really uh, check in that box. King of uh, Swords, check in the uh, Law box. Uh, seven of Fire, um, a fighter. So I think he's uh, he is in one of those top uh, spots. Let's see if he's uh, number three. Roy Cooper in, Carol, in uh, Kamala Harris's mind, is he in the three? Roy Cooper in the mind of Kamala Harris, is he in the three with three cards? One, two, three. Interesting. Roy Cooper. In there. So this is ah, the drown. So this is the hanged man. It's looking at something from another perspective. And this is an ominous card uh, at this point. Um, the next card is the uh, Jester of Gardens. So uh, Garden is going to be uh, hearts like. But what is uh, the Jester going to represent? He's just like a page. So a fool. Um, huh. And then uh, the last one is the Empress. Huh. I don't think she has that high an opinion of him. So not being in her top three at this minute doesn't mean that it can't happen at the last minute. I'll just say that. So let's ask, uh, is he going to be the pick? Is, is Roy Cooper going to be the pick? I mean, that's what we want to really want to know anyway. So and nothing is really said, you know, really definitively no. Again, three cards. One, two, and three. Is he going to be the pick? It looked good for yesterday's candidate so let's see so seven of winds so seven of one um seven of swords theft of betrayal uh eight of fire so fire has got to be actions plans forward movement um gosh and then something that you don't want well not really i'm sorry the four of winds is uh being careful about making that, this would be like swords for swords. So this is being careful about making that next movement. And we've got a deer in the background that looks like here that could get spooked. So um, it's not very strong that he will be. So I guess we'll just have to see what really happens. Hey, I'm gonna show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. So this Japaridze tarot is amazing. They're by Nino Japaridze. Now she's a Georgian artist. Georgia, not the United States, Georgia, Europe. Uh, uh, and um, so these are beautiful. Even the, the packaging is wonderful. It's shiny and glossy. It's a nice, you know, if you gave this as a gift, you'd feel like, wow, that was a really nice gift. The guidebook is so amazing. The text in this guidebook is by someone named Steve Lucas. And uh, his story is interesting. And it kind of goes over that in, in the guidebook, how he came to know her. And uh, he's a fellow a couple of years uh, younger than me, lives in New York. Uh, an art uh, enthusiast and gallery owner and he happened to meet uh, Nino as a matter of fact uh, on a uh, trip to Paris about 2008 I think it was where they uh, he she was exhibiting her art which I understand she's been doing for years I mean since she was a child and um, 
And so they came to an agreement that she would do uh, some depictions of the major arcana about six months down the road. That was about finished. And he, he talked to her about doing the rest of the cards. That took about another year. So she's probably got two years into the, all of these are full size, whatever full size is for her paintings. And uh, I can imagine that anybody would love having uh, some of these uh, works of art uh, in their home framed. Um, and they certainly exist somewhere. So I like to, to um, spread these cards out like this so that uh, if you don't look at cards very often, you can get a sense of what a whole pack looks like. And um, and the only difficulty with cards like these, this kind of surrealist art, is that you really need to know uh, what your divination of the uh, Rider Waite system is going to be. So they're beautiful cards, and I love using them.